Chinese EVs are flooding Europe. Combined with the domestic demand that is not increasing thus the world cannot absorb China's surplus production. China should be trying to support their manufacturing and those countries in Europe should be trying to defend their own internal industries. That's what good leaders of countries do. Hi, I'm David from EV World News. I'm here in studio today with my co-host engineer, Mike Herzog. How's it going, Mike? Doing great, David. All right. My article, is there really structural overcapacity of EVs and solar that the world cannot absorb? This is coming from the European Union, where they claim that Chinese EVs are flooding Europe. Now, they are selling. They're not just sitting on lots. So, you know, is flooding a good term? I mean, are they making them too cheap? Is China subsidizing that, you know, to drive that cost down? The thing is, most Germany doesn't, but a lot of the European Union countries, they're not necessarily giving you, they don't do the U.S. thing where you can get like a tax credit. They may simply not charge you sales tax. Now, in Europe, they have massive sales taxes. They call it a value-added tax. And on vehicles, it can be anywhere from 50 to 100%. I, I, I think Denmark, it's 100%. Yeah, it may be worse than that. If you're Danish, you, you're free to chime in. So Xi Jinping was in Paris, and there were calls for China to address the structural overcapacity that would lead to the Chinese EVs flooding Europe. And the president of the European Commission said, China continues to massively support its manufacturing sector. Is that really a bad thing? I mean, shouldn't they support their manufacturing sector? Shouldn't all countries support their industries? Combined with the domestic demand that is not increasing, thus the world cannot absorb China's surplus production. As we have shown, we will defend our car companies, we will defend our economies, and we will not hesitate to do so. Well, that's that's right. China should be trying to support their manufacturing, and those countries in Europe should be trying to defend their own internal industries. That's what good leaders of countries do. I mean, this this is all market function. I mean, they say, well, we can't absorb this extra. If, like the market's going to determine what you can absorb. <laughs> you can you can apply incentives or costs or whatever you want to call them to prevent that from happening and and influence market behavior. But the idea, like, while well, the world can't absorb it, well, the world can't absorb an increase and your industry at the same time. So. What are you going to do about it? Well, you got two conflicting opinions here. One, and same thing we're dealing with in the United States. We want immediate adoption of EVs, but we don't want it if people want to send all Chinese cars to us, okay, that, no, that are affordable, okay? And so you have, have this quandary. It's like, well, we do want everybody to drive EVs. We want them to drive our own EVs. We want the, you know, like in the US, we want them to drive ford and gm and yeah. god forbid tesla you know it's like people always forget that tesla is the most american-made car and ford gm and stellantis aren't even close you know and but they are the traditional automakers but you know if you're in france you want renault and citroen to be making your evs if you're in germany you want bmw and volkswagen producing and mercedes producing your evs or opal i'll all of this makes sense, right? You want your local industry to, to provide what you need. Yeah. Well, you want them to have jobs and, and build value and build equity um, in, in your native soil, not not ship that from a different location. So it's. I'm amazed that journalists don't understand economics. They understand when you have manufacturing, you have jobs. So let's say as a government, you subsidize that manufacturing. So let's say right now, the Inflation Reduction Act, which once again, it's a shitty name, okay? But because of it, Hyundai is going to start making 300,000 cars a year in Georgia. It's going to employ tens of thousands of people, okay? What are those tens of thousands of people? They're all going to get paid, right? They're all going to pay taxes, okay? And they all live in Georgia, which also has state taxes. So it's going to increase the state tax base for Georgia, and those people are going to keep voting for the politicians that put that in because they help them be better in life. And that's what, when you're a politician, your job is to improve the lives of the people in your district. It doesn't matter, you know, if I'm a senator from Nebraska, I have to be concerned about the citizens of Nebraska. I don't need to be concerned about the citizens of California or Georgia or Texas or Florida or wherever. I only need to be concerned about the citizens of Nebraska, yes, and, and the country as a whole, predominantly what people who voted me in 
what they're concerned for. So that makes for interesting things. I do find it fascinating though that the current administration is taking the ideas that somebody else is campaigning on and going ahead and implementing them because they're obviously, they're all kind of in agreement that that's what needs to be done. It's come to a head, right? I mean, it it had to. It had, had to come to this because even, God, at some of these price points for the Chinese manufacturers, even with a 100% tariff on them, I mean, if they're allowed to sell in the United States, they're still going to be competitive. Yeah, you bring a $10,000 seagull over here, put a $10,000 tariff on it, it's still only $20,000. The difference is when you go to the U.S. dealer model, and they're going to tack on another $5,000. And then all of a sudden, it's $25,000. And then you start having you know problems with cars sitting on lot. But th- there are workarounds to some of these tariff things. Because like, I, I look at the way that Volvo EX30 is being brought because it's been made in China by Geely, okay, which owns Volvo. And they're able to come over here and sell it at a $35,000 price point because Volvo exports from the United States. Volvo manufactures in the U.S., and exports other vehicles that it makes here. And because of that, they're able to import. So they, they opened up that, that hole in the tariff wall and now it can flow both ways through it. The un- way I'm understanding it is they will still pay the tariffs on the ones they bring in, but then they'll, it'll be refunded to them. Okay. So, th- so they'll get a refund. So that uh, makes for a different thing. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.